people and uh, it's really easy to get in touch with people here. So this is great. Um, thanks for bringing us all together to uh, share our science and learn from each other. And um, yeah, I hope that I also have something interesting to share with you today, uh, which is BioFMQ. So um, BioFMQ is an image analysis software that was designed to work um, on microbial communities to explore the spatial and temporal development of microbial communities. I'm a PhD student in Knut Drescher's biophysics lab at the Max Planck Institute in Marburg. And um, I developed this program together with two of my colleagues, Raimo and Eric, which you can see down here. Before I go into the details of BioFMQ, uh, I wanna give a quick introduction into biofilms in general, because I think this will help you understand why, uh, what motivated us to develop this program, why we really needed this program um, to be out there. Um, so biofilms are considered to be one of the most abundant forms of microbial life on Earth, uh, which alone makes them worth studying, of course, but they're also really fascinating. Um, they can be described as a sort of a three-dimensional structure of cells embedded in an extracellular matrix, and they come in all shapes and sizes. Uh, you can see here on the right, I have put up two images of uh, biofilms. One is a colony growth on agar, which is on the millimeter scale. So if you take this and you look at it just with your eyes, you can already see it. You can see this beautiful wrinkling structure there um, that is highlighted by the fluorescence. But also if you look at biofilms, you can also look at a much smaller scale. Um, the image below is a rendered view of a colony grown in a flow chamber. And there you can see that this is just a few microns high, few microns wide. You can see the individual cells there. So we really have a diversity between the scales at which biofilms grow or to which biofilms grow um, and also kind of what they look like. So all of these images are also biofilms. Um, you can see here the third image, the, the um, yellow part is a biofilm attached to um, its host. And uh, you can see that they are very diverse in, in their structure, in their shape, in their size. Um, so it's really, really interesting to look at that. Um, not only because they are diverse between each other, but also because within a biofilm you can find diversity. You can see that especially in, in larger biofilm cells um, show a different behavior in their center than in the outer areas of the biofilm. Um, also during the development, they um, may perform different behaviors. So we really have a phenotypic heterogeneity that manifests both in time and space. And if you want to explore that, and you want to explore that for all of these examples that I'm showing on the slide here, uh, you sort of run into the problem that they all are very different. And if you want to perform image analysis on them, you end up doing like a specific analysis for each one of those images. And uh, that is what we kind of wanted to overcome and avoid. We wanted to have something that would allow us to analyze all of these images that we have had in our lab at some point, either because we took it ourselves or because collaborators um, gave them to us. Um, we wanted to be able to have something that can just like fit them all. Um, so we set out to do this and we came up with Biofilm Q, um, which can now analyze basically any kind of fluorescent image and it can perform a spatial temporal solution. So you can kind of look inside your structure, what is happening in there and also what is changing over time. Um, what was very important to us with BioFMQ is that it would be um, um, accessible to a lot of people. So we didn't want any programming to be required to use it. Um, we have therefore created a hopefully user-friendly user interface. We have lots of video tutorials. We have a very thorough um, documentation up there to really guide you through the process because we hope that this will be helpful to everyone um, or a lot of people working in the field working microscopy with um, micro colonies and um, wanted to kind of like make this accessible to a lot of people. Um, so now I'm going to work you a little bit through what biofilm can do and how it works. Um, in general you always have a segmentation step during which you identify um, your structure compared to background. So you identify your cells, for example. This is followed by an analysis step during which you choose which properties you want to calculate for your structure. And then finally, we have a visualization part that lets you visualize these properties in different types of graphs. And the visualization part is also really useful because it's integrated into BioFMQ and you can go back and forth, you can change some properties, some parameters about the segmentation, and then look at what changes in the visualization part to really get a feeling for what changes if you tweak with the parameters. Um, so get this a little bit more intuitive. 
And now I'm going to go a little bit more into each of these uh, three steps and explain in more detail what they do specifically. So I'm going to start with the segmentation. And this is really part of BioFMQ, you might say, because a good segmentation is the very first and probably one of the most important steps or the most important step towards a good image analysis. And um, we start here in BioFMQ with something very simple. So this is really image analysis 101. You filter your image and then you threshold it. Um, so there's really no magic in there. Uh, the little bit of magic comes afterwards, which is when we slice our structure into cubes. And the reason why we do this is that we need a spatial context for any kind of measure then that we do. And often people use single cells as the spatial context. If they have a single cell resolution, they can say, oh, this particular cell on the biofilm, this one up here, what are its properties? Um, but we don't always have that. If you remember back to the images I showed you on like the second slide, uh, a lot of these images didn't have single cell resolution. It, you don't always have it, you don't always need it. And um, that's why instead of going for that, we went for this cubed approach. So now that we have our structure sliced into cubes, we treat each of those cubes as a pseudo cell. And for this cell, we calculate all the properties that we want to calculate. And the position of the cube gives you the spatial context that we need. But of course, we know that other people might actually have already themselves great segmentation tools. Some people might have single cell resolution. So we also included the possibility that you can import already pre-segmented data into BioFMQ. Uh, maybe you have a neural network um, that works very well for your stuff, or maybe you have used another program. So you don't need the segmentation step. You can also import pre-segmented images and then go straight to the analysis part. So what kind of properties can you now quantify with BioFMQ? Probably the simplest one you can think about is fluorescent signals. You can measure how strong is your fluorescence in different areas of the biofilm or of your structure. What about fluorescent ratios of different channels? Um, then we also have the possibility to measure architectural properties. And there, the first thing that comes to mind is maybe a density. How dense are my cells packed in a biofilm or in my structure? Um, but also something like uh, local height, local thickness. Roughness coefficients come to mind here. So these properties we can all measure locally, which means that we can follow them over time and in space. And um, we visualize those, and I wanna take a short moment to describe to you what these chymographs here on the left uh, have to say. We visualize those in these chymographs, where on one axis, the x-axis here, you have time, and on the y-axis, you have a spatial component. And here the space is the distance to the surface, which means that we're going kind of like from the deep core of the biofilm, we're going outside. So now you can not only see how the signal or how your property changes over time, but you can also see how does it change related to where I am in the biofilm. So you can see that, for example, this matrix reporter, it's really important to know where I am in the biofilm because the signal is much stronger outside than it is inside. Another thing that you can quantify with BioFMQ is looking at interactions between different, in this case, kind of channels. So these channels can represent different species. They can represent a host and a biofilm. They can represent page and bacteria, all these kinds of things. And you can um, ask, how are they acting in relation to each other? In this example, which was published by a colleague of mine last year, we took BioFMQ. And um, he asked the question, if I have biofilms pre-treated with antibiotics, and I add, after treating the five antibiotics, another strain in the flow chamber, where would these invading cells localize? And we use BioFilmQ to find out that these cells localize at the outside of the dying biofilm rather than the inside, for example. So these kind of questions can be asked. Then you can look at compositions, you can look at relative abundances in space and in time. But of course, you can also just ask, um, the question, how does my general biofilm architecture, my general biofilm properties evolve over time? So just how does the roughness evolve? How does the volume evolve? Do I have like an, an increase in, what's my increase in height, in thickness, in um, density in the biofilm? All of these questions are also answerable with Biofilm Q. And then finally, if you're lazy like me, uh, you might also appreciate that we have a high throughput analysis tool in there that, that lets you kind of like um, take a lot of folders with all of kind of the same data in there, but maybe different conditions or different strains. Um, and then you just press one button and all of them will run with this exact same analysis, saving you time and letting it run over the weekend or something. Going to the visualization part, here we have six different types of plots that you can do. 
um, starting with this chimo graph that I've shown you before, the two here on the side you have seen. Um, but you can actually also use the same um, type of plot to make a demo graph. And now a demo graph lets you um, compare different conditions or different strains to each, each other. In this example here, um, we, obtain, uh, we got data from Susanna Heusel lab in Copenhagen where they had different Pseudomonas aeruginosa strains isolated um, from patients. And each column in this uh, graph here represents one strain. And then um, the rows are again a spatial measure. And in general, what we were trying to aim for here was to measure their biofilm forming capabilities. So now you can look at all of these different strains kind of next to each other and see what is going on, what is different here than in the other strain. And of course, you could look at any kind of other measure here too. Another type of graphs that you can do is just very simple scatter plots. They can be two-dimensional or three-dimensional and can include color to kind of just look at um, how things are, um, how your data looks like in the biofilm or in your structure. And um, histograms, just to see, um, it's, it's a very good control to see how your properties are um, doing in the biofilm, but then also what we call a 1.5D histogram, which would be one parameter resolved by another. That means that you can look, for example, at correlations between different properties, if they're present or not. And then finally, if you have several subpopulations, in your community and you want to separate them, we also have a filtering tool that lets you focus on one particular subpopulation with certain properties and look at this um, only or compare between different populations. Of course, Bifum Q is uh, maybe a lot more. And uh, I would be happy to talk to you in, in the chat a little bit, but also check out our website if you think this might be interesting to you. The tool is already there. You can download it. It's open source. Um, so if you're a programmer, you can extend it. Uh, if you like, we also have some possibilities to extend it in there. Um, as I said, we have video tutorials guiding you through. We have documentation. And uh, for technical questions, we have this forum here, which has been really uh, useful. And um, of course, you can also, I will be around I will be in the chat. So reach out to me if you think BioFinQ might be useful to you. And uh, with this, I would like to thank everyone involved in this project. There were a lot of people, um, a lot of uh, collaborators that kind of donated their data for us uh, to test BioFinQ and a lot of people that tested BioFinQ that gave suggestions for new features. So uh, this has really been um, a lot of work for a lot of people and I'm very grateful uh, to be working in this amazing lab and of course also for our funding and um, yeah thank you for listening and i'm now open for questions hello thank you hannah for a great talk i think it's really great if people and labs invest the time to build tools for the wider community because we can't all reinvent the wheel especially if you want to look at the quantitative impact of spatial structure and I know it's a lot of work to develop image analysis. Um, I have a question. So in the beginning, you, you said you want to analyze all experiments in the lab using Biofilm Q. Um, there is, is that working? Uh, do you go back in time and reanalyze experiments? Uh, how, how do you employ it in the, in the, in the work stream of, of your colleagues' works? Yes, yeah, well, of course. Um, well, Bifum Q kind of like evolved over time in the sense that we used to have some MATLAB scripts for specific stuff that in the end ended up in Bifum Q. So it's kind of a, a patchwork of different works. So it has already been used basically years ago in its very, very rudimentary form and has evolved with the lab and the questions that we answered with the lab. Um, but everything, of course, we, we do not go back and analyze like already published data, but um, Sometimes it does happen that we have had a question that we thought about a while ago. Back then we couldn't really find a good way to analyze it and now we're looking back at the data. Um, but yeah, in general, BioFunQ has evolved with the projects in, in the lab and with our collaborators. So it's kind of a, um, it's, it's like a, a continuous growth of the program too. We have another question from Nelly Henry. She asked, do you consider linear response of the fluorescent labeling in your calculations, for instance, between fluorescence intensity and density in the biofilm context, which markers? Oh, but this is a biological question, right? I'm not a physicist. Um, maybe <laughs> I'm not a biologist. Um, 
I'm not sure if I understood this correctly. Are you thinking maybe about something like this here? So where here, for example, we were looking at um, a local density and how it relates to the fluorescence intensity. Is um, does, does that refer to the question? Maybe you can um, um, or maybe you can repeat it again so, so I can better understand what it aims, what it's aiming for. Um, I I think I think your plot uh, addresses the question. Okay. Um, and I encourage Nelly and Hannah to get in touch in the chat. Sure, okay. thank you. Um, okay, uh, thanks for your talk, Hannah. And if you could unshare your screen.